it's so crazy how when I came back home, I felt like the feelings and emotions that I was currently going through were kind of independent uh, and no one else was necessarily experiencing this because I spent all this time traveling and I was coming back and uh, I was alone in this. But almost every single one of my close friends I talked to about what I was experiencing, they were kind of experiencing the exact same thing at the exact same time. And today I caught up with one of my really good friends that I actually met in my travels who also uh, you know, spent some time traveling and she's feeling the exact same way in her life right now where she is also trying to think about what does she want to do in her life and uh, how she can find more financial stability and look after her parents and uh, find a sense of purpose and fulfillment in the work that she does. And it's it's so interesting how we both started traveling I guess she started traveling like maybe a year after I did. But when I first met her, she was also really fascinated about this world of traveling. And, um, you know, we both got a chance to experience that. We we always wanted to travel the world. She did it in her own domain. I did it in mine. And we even got a chance to spend time traveling together. When when I was in Egypt, I got a, I got a chance to spend like almost a month and a half just like exploring Cairo with her. And it's so interesting how although we had an amazing time, during that time, that was also a very climactic point where I, myself and her were kind of questioning what we want to do going forward. And she got a chance to also see me at a point where I was very burnt out. When I was in Egypt, that was about four to five months into my, my last batch of travels. I was feeling very burnt out and um, she got a chance to kind of see that. And now when I told her that like I'm kind of like settling down for lack of better words, she was like, OK, I saw I saw that coming. But, um, you know, it, it kind of gives me comfort, although like I, I want my friends to succeed. It kind of gives me comfort knowing that like, you know, you know, my friends are going through somewhat of the same struggles that I am in. Maybe this sounds like very selfish, but it does give me comfort. Like, although I want to see them succeed, but it selfishly gives me comfort knowing that I'm not alone in this battle. That, um, you know, we're, this is normal. We're all experiencing this. And, um... It makes it relatable. It, it gives me someone to talk to about all this stuff. But I also think that like our circumstances are so, so different. Um, you know, like for me, I uh, when when my life took a bad turn, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to I'm going to come back home and um, I'm going to be fine. Um, my, my family's here. Everything's good. But with my friend, uh, you know, she's from Lebanon. So and like Lebanon you know, their economy is collapsing, but also like with everything that's happening in Palestine, you know, like they like there's bombs dropping on Lebanon at this point as well. So, you know, when she goes back home, she's always like, I, I don't see a future over here, which is so scary because at least like, you know, for me, I can always come back home. I always have family over here and Canada's not going anywhere, hopefully, inshallah. But for her, the future of Lebanon and just the current state of that country is so unpredictable that right now while she's on the road, she's like, I don't feel fulfilled. But when I go home, I don't feel, feel fulfilled either. And I know I can't necessarily build a future over there. And, you know, she's got a Lebanese passport. So it's very tough. You know, part of this makes me so grateful at like my privilege that I have, you know, although I sometimes feel like feels like, um, you know, your circumstance is terrible. Comparison is a thief of joy, but comparison also humbles you because it makes you realize how privileged you actually are. And I mean, you know, like besides all that, like just um, one thing I'm really grateful for is having this friendship. And I think this is what travel has done. It's given me it's given me a glimpse into people's lives that are very different from my own, which gives me perspective. It makes me realize at times how lucky I am and takes me it makes me realize how different my beliefs are to others. Um and I really appreciate that. And especially this friend of mine, um, you know, she's someone who grew up in Lebanon, in the Eastern world, uh, in a religious country per se. And but she was always fascinated by like the Western, you know, like beliefs and mindsets. And she got a chance to explore that. And I'm really, really fascinated by where she's ended up now in her in her current beliefs. And I've always said that I, I I've always tried to have more female friends in my lives because it gives me perspective into um you know the, the struggles that women face in this world or just there's some perspectives that you know like i have about relationships about all that stuff which i'm able to discuss with her and get the perspective of a woman on and um you know the certain certain beliefs that i have now adopted in, in regards to like you know having like 
more uh, like traditional gender roles in relationships where like I have to be the provider uh, and my partner is more so the caregiver. Um, these are still somewhat fluid, but like there that is like the baseline responsibility that you know we have in the relationship. So after spending some time traveling, I was like, you know what? I really believe in this. I think that like these roles have to be set into place, and this is the bare minimum responsibility that we both have in a relationship. But this kind of goes against like these the, the 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 West and like how the West sees like gender roles. I think over here it's a lot more fluid, and sometimes it's even completely reversed. Um, and statistically speaking, you know, like relationships in in this Eastern world following these gender uh, these um. What are they called? Gender roles in relationships are much more successful than they are in, you know, like let's say North America, for example. So, talking to her about this, um, I it gives me perspective, and you know, for the most part, like she kind of agreed with like my perspectives on this stuff, and we talked a little bit about how, you know, like there's masculinity and femininity in all of us. It's a balance between these things. So she. Help me better understand like what what are feminine traits and what one thing one really interesting thing she, thing that she brought up is she talks about how like you know growing up because of like her circumstance she had to like channel more for masculine um, traits and those are those are traits that she still embodies today where she's a lot more independent she's a lot more um, um, I guess like decisive um, and. Uh, She's very, very self-reliant, which is all which is all great stuff for you to be independent. But when it comes time to being in a relationship, it becomes a lot harder to like balance those two sides. Um, because what that attracts when your mas- masculinity is much higher, you're going to attra- attract someone who is maybe a little bit more feminine. And um, like I, I noticed this, you know, I, I, I noticed uh, that this is something that happens in relationships. And I'm trying to see if it applies, like how it applies to my life. Um and it's also interesting how I, I, you know, it's funny because I told her that like I, I, I want a big feminine trait that I have is that I'm a very emotional person. But she's like, that's not a feminine trait. It's a very normal trait for all of us to have. Uh, so it's uh, it's really interesting. Like it's re- really interesting getting these perspectives because it helps me better understand like how I can be a better man. But also interesting how like, you know, she says that like based on what your masculinity, femininity ratio is that you're going to attract like the the opposite right so for her like uh, or in my case like if i'm more of a feminine man then i'm going to attract more of a masculine women in 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 the sense of like personality traits so if i if i want to find someone who's truly a nurturing care uh, uh, caregiving loving mother of my future future children then i have to become a more masculine provider um you know, I have to be someone who's able to, you know, take care of my family, provide for them financially, emotionally, um, all these things. And it's it just reassures how, like, I if I want to find a proper partner, I need to become, like, if I want to find that, like, dream person, I need to become someone who is worthy of that person or is compatible with that person. And... Yeah, it's just uh, it's interesting. You know, I'm you know I'm I'm just really grateful for this this friendship that I have with my my friend. Um, she's a, she's a really good person who's always given me like a very like unique perspective on life, and it's always interesting like finding a friend who, you know, you can somewhat look up to while they kind of look up to you as well. Because this one friend, like when I met, like I feel like maybe she looked up to me in a sense, and now I'm like kind of looking up to her in certain aspects of it. And I think that's, that's like, just like the beauty of like a healthy friendship where you have that dynamic where you guys can really learn from each other. You guys can grow together and you can rely on each other as well. So yeah, it was really interesting having this conversation. And this is one of the friends I made on the road uh, in my travels. And um, if, if she was the only like upside to traveling, it made all the traveling worth it, to be honest. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for these friendships. I'm really grateful for this growth, this unique perspective. And I hope I continue to, I hope I continue to welcome beliefs that sometimes contradict my own, because I think there's something you can always learn from these, these unique perspectives that others have. So yeah, 
to be honest, I didn't really know what to talk about in, in today's video. So I thought I'd just, you know, kind of like um, go over this amazing conversation I had with my friend. And I felt uh, I felt like a lot, a lot energized, a lot more energized after this call. Um, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for these friendships. Oh. <sighs>